Bon dia, bon dia, bon dia. What's going on, everyone? This is Alex, and you're listening to the Jiu-Jitsu Radio Podcast. This is episode four, and as always, it is brought to you by our sponsor, ChokeAloha.com. I don't get any money from them, but they are very supportive of this podcast, so I ask that you guys go out there and support them. ChokeAloha.com, they are an apparel company, and they are actually one of the few people that really put out a positive vibe into the jiu-jitsu scene. They've been very supportive of this podcast, and I can't thank them enough for it. So be sure you go to chocaloha.com, use the promo code jiu radio, and you'll get 10% off your entire order, which is pretty awesome considering the fact that they got some more apparel, some new stuff coming out soon. I know that they got some cool spats coming out. I think there's some new shirts and maybe some rash guards and patches, which, just a note, I know you're listening. I got to get some patches, so save me one. I'll be ordering it as soon as they come out. Now, into this podcast, this is someone that I basically wanted to to get on the podcast since day one. Uh, it just took a while to really get the schedule synced up together where we both had time to do this. This is none other than my professor, a true living legend of jiu-jitsu and MMA, George Santiago. He is the former Sengoku middleweight champion and the former Strike Force middleweight champion. He um, is a very humble person, and uh, it takes a while to really get him going to, to really talk about all the amazing things that he has done in his MMA and jiu-jitsu career so far. So I want to thank the professor, George Santiago, for taking the time to doing this. I know that Sometimes he doesn't really like to get into all the crazy stories, but I think you guys are going to really enjoy them. These are stories that I've always asked him. Every once in a while, I'll ask him for a couple extra details. But, I mean, this guy went from being a you know, middleweight champion in Sengoku to partying with Putin and all this other crazy stuff. And if you guys stick to the end of the podcast, I think you'll really get excited as much as we did Um doing this podcast because we kind of get into a uh, conversation about what it would take for him to come out of retirement and who would it be that he would have to fight and I think the answer is pretty exciting and uh, I think we should all kind of join in on the bandwagon and the social media to uh, see if we can make that match happen. I'm not going to spoil it for you guys, just be sure to, uh, to stick to the end and check it out. If you hear a bunch of clicks in the back, that's actually my good friend uh, Joe Onimus taking photos. Uh, he was kind enough to help out for this episode and uh, snag some shots and uh, and do a little bit of research in the background for the stuff that I couldn't remember. And uh, last but not least, be sure to follow the Spotify playlist. The link will be on the Instagram post for this podcast. You'll also be able to find it on the SoundCloud page for it. Um, this week I switched it up. I uh, went uh, back to my rock and heavy metal roots, and I think you guys will dig it. we got to switch it up every once in a while. Don't forget that if you have a band or if you have any kind of music suggestions, please feel free to message me on Instagram, and uh, I'll see what I can do. If you have your own band you think uh, that would be cool to have up there, please feel free to uh, message me, and I'll do what I can to throw it up there. Also, if you are interested in checking out some of the photos and other things that I do, you can check out my page mycosmicjourney.com that's a personal blog that I have up that I have photos from all the different MMA events that I've done Um, a lot of the ocean photography stuff that I do and the surf photos and just anything uh, related to uh, my life if you guys are interested in mycosmicjourney.com follow the Spotify playlist go to chocaloha.com get yourself some new threads As always, guys, please, please take the time to share this podcast if you like it. Share it with your friends. Like it. Subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Um, I've been getting a lot of messages and comments and stuff like that, how much people are enjoying the podcast, which means a lot to me. So thank you to everyone who's taken the time to come up to me and say that to me. It actually means a lot considering the fact that I don't make any money whatsoever doing this, and this is all out of uh, love for the game. So please, if you enjoy it, take the time to leave a review on iTunes, share this podcast, post it on Facebook, on Instagram, share it with your friends. Uh, any help you guys can uh, 
can give me on spreading this, I would greatly appreciate it. Also, if you have anyone that you feel you'd want to have on this podcast, please let me know. I'll do what I can to uh, get them on here. So without any further ado, here is George Santiago. Ladies and gentlemen, I am here with Sengoku champion, Strike Force champion, and owner of Excel Jiu Jitsu, MMA legend George Santiago, Professor George Santiago. Hey, hello everyone. Who's there? Good morning. I'm honored to be here. Glad to be to do this thing with the Lexus for sure. Oh, thank you for, for doing this. I know I've been asking you to do this for a while and I know I'm always in and out of uh, the gym just because uh, work's so crazy, but now I get a little bit more time and now I get to train a little bit more. So you actually just opened this school within the last six, six months. months. Six months. We, we had just made six months in Boynton Beach, uh, right after Black Zenith sort of separates within the, some members. Uh, the opportunity was here, uh, was there. I was waiting for my call and I think it was just the right moment because I always have the, that desire to, to have my own, my own to gym and, and teach whatever, everything I learn and do the way I believe it, you know? So I'm very happy right now. So you have, uh, I mean, you have a very clear lineage. I know for a lot of people, the lineage is very important to them as far as jujitsu, but yours is very clear as far as down the line. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I mean, I've always, I was, I came from judo, you know, I did nationals, I was champ, national champion of Brazil, but ever since I started being a BTT, uh, I used to be students of Murillo with Samantha, then jump to we probably Voyage as the my master with my black belt when he came to America. He brought us together with the shark and a couple other guys. Uh, I mean this is it, that's my jujitsu history. Uh, unfortunately I had to stop because of MMA when the board came to America, it was uh, take it off the V, let's go. That's the, the new hottest thing now. Let's go train in MMA. And when they opened the black belt, the ATT back then, so two thousand two well, I'm now getting the chance to leave in again what I lost. I stopped. Right. You know, that's, that's why I have very half moment now, stage in my life. Yeah, that's one thing that a lot of people don't know. Um, it's kind of crazy. If you really do the research, you were one of the, the main guys that really kind of started bringing MMA to the forefront in the United States. You came in with, with Ricardo Laborio. Mario Sperry and all these other guys that really started up, but you were part of that group. Yeah, I I think, I mean, there's a lot of guys I, I respect a lot, and you know, they really deserve to be recognized every time in the MMA Hall of Fame, you know? Guys that were here behind, before us, but I guess when we came in 2002 and they started ATT, you know, American Top Team, and start getting more exposure, and we were like the, the main, and, and made jam in the United States together with Bad Militage back then. Yeah. Then UFC, the whole reality show, everything, everybody got out there right off the bat. And I got a chance to meet. I was just talking to you. I remember when the UFC crew, they were talking about the UFC have their own channel, and their own network. And TV, I was just real. Like, I remember us, we bore everybody. I started making like this smile on our face, like, what the fuck are they talking about? You know? Yeah. I and yeah, even right now, it's just insane just to say that. What I'm telling right now, what are you crazy? Of course, they have their feet. Yeah. Now it's normal, but a couple of years, it wasn't like that. Yeah, you guys, like someone was saying, oh, we're going to have an entire channel dedicated yeah. to MMA. It's like, okay, but. I'm people, not a, yeah, I'm not a nerd. I don't know. I'm not as smart as a computer, but I was just like, man, how do they do that? <laughs> <laughs> so. Just kind of give me like a, a background, really, because I know once in a while we talk about it, but I never got a real in-depth story of how to, how and why you came to the U.S. and how you got really moving towards your your MMA career. Because you said you went from judo to jujitsu, jujitsu to MMA. Yeah. So I came from a small town, man, a very small town, and I was sad. It used to be like a, K West. You know, I haven't even go by training, but I used to fight judo. I'd be at their base where I used to leave. My, my father used to work in a 
nuclear power plant. So we had sponsors because you know, a small community in the island, you know? Yeah. So I used to fight judo every other weekend. And started jiu-jitsu 2004 and I loved it, you know? Start competing and even playing American games, but uh, I was still from the island training with 10 guys, yeah. you know? And making finals. And until I break into a finals of Pan American Games with Roger Gracie that I lost. Then we went for the words and I, I beat him up because of course <laughs> I dropped him there. Bro, I beat him up. Like everybody who sees that, the Veldor saw that we bored him. That's why they got like, hey, who are you? Yeah. You know, you're here by yourself in downtown. Like, yeah, me and my friend. <laughs> Just going to beat up. Uh, just like, yeah, go, stop. It's just like, then I got in this together with the guys, the right guys. I used to, I, if you want to compete and be the best in the world, be together. So that's when I met them. And ever since it got closer, closer, winning a lot of tournaments and as a purple belt. So when I got my brown belt, then we borrowed. I know we can go further than this and making like good fights, but. And we're gonna be world champion jiu jitsu, of course, but uh, this is the thing. I'm, I'm leaving, you know? All right. I'm leaving. We started this new thing, that's the future. Back then, it was the future. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Let's go. Mom, I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> Two weeks later, I was here in America, which is something I never thought I would leave here, ever in my life. Yeah, I mean. And then from there, then it's a whole different story altogether. Yeah, a lot of good people I met, a lot of good friends I made, a lot of good titles I, I got to own titles and belts. And I'm very, I'm very fortunate and very happy for what I've done. I mean, like, I could say, I could say for myself, everybody has their own goals and own their views. But I, I grew up seeing you know taller and want to fight in Japan. I want to be the champion. Of Japan. Yeah. You know, that was my goal. Once I got it, it was just like, okay, you know. Yeah, I'm good now. Enough, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's that's one thing, too, that's pretty crazy. I know you told me the stories before, but to be the Sengoku champion, that was in itself a an entire battle because they didn't even want to give you the belt, right? No, they didn't want to give me the belt. They have the, the, the yeah, they have the guy. I won the, the tournament, and they didn't even give me the belt. <laughs> like, you know, you can't have this belt. No, you can't have this belt. You gotta fight another guy. So I have to fight another tournament. It's funny, but like, everything builds up in the, you know, everything. I used to say everything you do, even if it's not what you wanted to do, but it can take something good from it. You know, I use it some, you're gonna get more experience. You're gonna get better every time. You keep training, you keep fighting, you know, keep trying to get better and sort of stuff. And I think you build, you build it up to the place. They wanted to be, you know, and never, and nothing in my life that came easy was a good thing, you know, right? To give me that sense of always when I need to do something. And I'm taking this for Jiu-Jitsu now. I'm taking this for my own gym. Yeah. All my whole fighting Jiu-Jitsu experience of achieving, you know, visualization, what I want and fight, work, you know, find out what it is. I don't know nothing about business. I don't know nothing about construction. I wanted to know, you know. Yeah, just try to bring it to Jitsu for what I do now and then. I didn't forget what I was talking about. <laughs> well, I mean, no, like just how how you you're really you're someone that that really believes in setting your goal. You go for it, and then you just oh, move yeah. on to the next it's thing. It's all about the goals, you know. All about what you what you see, you know. You gotta see yourself. You gotta close your eyes, your eyes and be honest, you know. You see yourself being that person, you see yourself driving that car, wearing that belt, claiming that title, go for it. You know, you you are always right. That's what I have in my mind. You always right. You gotta work. So how'd you get the actual opportunity? I mean, moving up and then you just got the phone call, hey, we want you to fight for the belt for Sengoku. Actually, when I fought in, okay, I fought in Strike Force. Yeah. Their first tournament. So, two fights one night for Pranger, Trevor Pranger. It's a nice guy. Awesome man. I won the title and sang uh, in Strike Force. Oh, so this what happened. <laughs> <laughs> I remember now. Yeah. You, you, we had the, the, your Strike Force put up a tournament to see who could fight for the title. Right. Which came Shamrock. Yeah. So, 
Sure enough, I won the title. So why do you want me to fight Kim <laughs> So, so that same group was when Pride came apart. So we have K1 Heroes and Sengoku, and they got in touch with me wanting to fight for us in our first show in Japan. Like, hell yeah. And that was, that's what I wanted my whole life, you know. But even then, even there I had to fight a couple guys. Yeah. They said, hey, I wanted to fight. When I got there, no, I was going to do a tournament. Like, no, they just set you up. Yeah, I'm like, okay, at least we're getting paid what we got. So did you think like that? They probably thought like, oh, this guy will be easy. Like our guys will just run through him, and then we'll get a and strike right. for us. Yeah, or yeah, the, I guess it really, it really, yeah, that kind of backfired. Huh? Yeah, <laughs> same as the first fight. I went to to, to Russia with Jay Z. They set me up to, to yeah to get fucked up, and I won. Like, oh, yeah. I mean, a lot of people don't know you've had you've had some legit fights. You you are definitely one of the the guys that that. Put the the footprints in place for for jujitsu. I mean, you you fought. Uh, was it Mizugaki? No, Mizaki. Uh, Nakamura, yeah, Mizaki. Nakamura, Nakamura. Yeah. Nakamura. You were even supposed to fight Vitor at one time. I used to post fight Vitor Belfort. Yeah, yeah. We got chance to. Uh, we were supposed to fight Affliction show when yeah. someone got caught and we. <laughs> Josh Barnett got caught in Israel. I don't know what happened. Yeah, what deal was if he was at sea behind, but. It fell down, but I was it was a week away from the fight. I was pretty excited. Yeah, and for him, oh yeah. How do you think that would have turned out? I have no idea. Like all my fights, <laughs> <laughs> sometimes we have crazy, crazy moments. We don't know where you're going. You just know what you want. But I mean, like the way that I, I always find it funny, the way that the world kind of works is that you guys were supposed to fight, and then years down the road, now you're the, the head coach of the Black Zillions. Not only were you training, but then you become the one of the head coaches for yeah, the Black Zillions. Yeah. And you train in Vitor. That was fun, yeah. Then fight, and then uh, be friends with their good coaches by that time. Yeah. They called like Neil. Neil was like, man, we are shitting our pants because I was studying you so much. <laughs> because I was in Japan already. And like, man, Vitor was awesome. Vitor was calling all my friends to know what's going on. Oh, really? He yeah. was just digging deep. Yeah. Hey, who's this guy? What he's doing? You know, where he came from. Oh, man. What he's good at. You know. So, who threw you under the bus? Did anybody throw you under Nobody the bus? Nobody threw me under the bus. I was just like, I was just happy because to hear him <laughs> <laughs> trying to guess. I'm like, ah, okay. So you what do you, what's I, up. It's what do you think now then like seeing how his you know like you you won your championships you moved on and then you see how he's doing in his career he just finished his last UFC fight like what do you think when you see stuff like that guys that you grew up with Oh the, yeah F I, yeah I, I wasn't fighting I was fighting already I I think Victor is one of a few fighters that I like get to know like personally and closer you see their lifestyle there, he's really, he really knows what he's doing. Yeah. I was then coaching him and see him train the way he was trained, how how much dedication he puts on, you know, how how professional he is with his life, with his or in uh, his uh, his family, you know, everything like he moves around around the, what he's doing, you know. Yeah. Unfortunately he's not all the fighters, you know. Yeah. They really they really be work behind the system and he was the one, I'm like, man, that's really professional. I'm, and I'm like, I'm still his fan. I mean, I'm, if you if you say you're not a fan of you, Vito Bell for your line, because yeah. he wore one day. Yeah. Maybe you'll be later like, ah, because he did that, and yeah, Jesus yeah. stuff, and you're like, God, I'm like, but you gotta be honest, that guy is really professional, you know, he really trains. If you see him, his routine of training, it's insane. Yeah. I mean, he's probably one of the first ones that really treated MMA or fighting as a business yes he was one of the first ones here where he would bring coaches from other camps where he would travel for the camps where yeah. he would sit there and even market himself and market himself yeah the way he, he had the star joke yeah he's the guy he was no no not taking away or have anything but it was a good combination yeah it's pretty crazy i mean I, I was fortunate enough to to be able to come in and watch a lot of like those training sessions and Oh yeah, and see all you guys were. Yeah, I was there. I was there towards the the last like two years, three years of like yeah. the whole Black Zillion camp. It was mm -hmm. pretty crazy to see how uh, all the moving parts 
watching that all the just kind of it's almost it's a full on soap opera like a, a gym like of that size becomes a full on soap opera oh. like every little storyline and no. people who who are supposed to fight and then end up training together and then I saw it yeah I mean it's I, don't, it's I know there's crazy. tons of stories that you can't it's tell fucking I, I remember seeing you walking around looking shit and your eyes are all white oh open. yeah what the fuck I'm like I was just going laughing on? yeah that, that's what's up, bro. <laughs> I still I still remember like uh, one of the first times that I came in and Vitor was training and he just starts yelling at other people training. I'm like, what the fuck is this guy doing? I'm like, damn. Like, and I mean, it's, it's really awesome to be surrounded by people with that kind of like intensity because that's focus and that's passion. And that becomes um, like a virus. It affects other people. When you start working around other people that are that passionate, it can either make you or break you. Some people can't handle that that mentality, and other people, you know, strive to be stronger. So it was always fun to see exactly how he did everything hard work. A lot of people shit on him because of like this, that, and the other, but he worked for it. He a hundred percent works for he it. He really worked for it. Yeah, he really believed it. And you can tell. It, it it's hard to see to convince someone see what you see. You know, you have your own dreams, but you definitely can be. You know, excited, get some a lot of energy for someone like that, you know, because he used to be like louder. Yeah. You know, everybody has their own ways. I had my own way of see what I want. Yeah. So he's big, his mind, so he's trained, you know. And then, like, you know, yeah. everybody so, have their way to express themselves. And then, every, in that respect, you know, everybody's way. So you think he's going to go to start fighting in Japan? I know that there's rumors and stuff going around about it. To be honest, I have no idea. <laughs> I've been watching. <laughs> I haven't watched much MMA. Yeah. Uh, to be real, I watched the wars at home. We yeah. can but, uh, I think that's one thing. Like we've talked about it before. Everybody sees the limelight. Everyone's like, "Oh, I wish I could do that. I wish I could go train and travel the world and fight." But then someone like you, that you've done the the fighter aspect of it, and then done the coaching aspect of it. I mean, I remember you were gone every weekend. Yeah. Every weekend, and it's like. People don't get that it's you're not sitting there, you're not hanging out. Yep, you see the same person every week in a different country. You're supposed to sleep in times that you were yeah. awake, and <laughs> it's. I got to live a lot of. I mean, a lot of being in a lot of spots, even manage sometimes, helping manage you guys, getting fights done. But it's you get you got burned by the system, you know, especially yes. because. Being a head coach and putting my ass, in, you know, in front of a, in a, in a, in a line of, of the fighters, because I, I, I was a fighter, so I respect the fighters. I wasn't not all, only a coach. Yeah. Just a coach. I know how to, no, I was a fighter. I know what it takes. And, and, I, and I recognize hard work, you know, and I like things to be honest. And it's not honest. It's not, yeah. it's not black and white. It's great. You yeah. know, always it's great. And, I have friends and I, I I really look up for them, so it's hard for me not to say anything. Yeah, well, especially because you've seen it, and some guys might just still have that ego where they don't want to admit to it or yeah. certain things. It's 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 sad for coach and friend being around, do sort of stuff, you know. But yeah, that's the way it is, man. But like I said, nobody if you someone don't see what you see is. You can't force someone to see that. You can't them. force yeah. it. That's the point of view. You just well, everyone has their own universe that they look at, out yeah. from. It makes it a happy, so yeah, do it. Right. So now I've been wanting to, to get this recorded for a long time, and I always love hearing this story. There's the story that went around about you were cornering Bigfoot Silva in was oh. in Japan. You oh. were with Bigfoot Silva, and I think it was you and Jay Z. Oh. And he forgot his fight shorts. Oh fuck! Yeah, that was a long time. I think yeah. it was K one here. Yeah, that's that's how deep I go into all this stuff. Like that's when I, I heard this rumor years ago. I was like, no, that's that's bullshit. And then I found out it was you that was with him. Oh yeah, it was me, Jay Z, and Alex Davis running Tokyo to find a short size of Bigfoot in Tokyo. <laughs> <laughs> Five. <laughs> so wait. So, so tell. Wait. So tell the the actual story. So like, what happened? So you guys fly out for Bigfoot Silva's fight. Who was he fighting? I no, know. I he fought Tony Erickson. 
Oh, right, 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 right. So I, I didn't know him. I got to meet him, I mean, be friends of, with him that day. Right, right. I never met. I went there for Jay-Z. I think it was Jay-Z, I don't know. Why. Yeah, it was Jay-Z's fight. fight. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's fine, man. He was, it was the K1 heroes, bro. We hit, we hit all the gold gym in Tokyo. We almost thought about, yeah, swear to God, yeah, get somewhere or somewhere around, like I don't know, get a flight, go get a short. You see so, Alex Davis biting his cell phone like. <laughs> <laughs> he does that still too. He's still so doing it. Same right, shit. So, so he's out there. He forgets his fight shorts. Starts freaking out because it's the night before the fight and he has no fight shorts. No man, bro, Jay Z, look, look at this guy, man. He fought. We did. We did, went to the tournament. Father. First fight of the tournament, one. Nice. You know Jay Z, Mr. Hip Hop. Okay. okay. Back to backstage. Then I found out he has a new, different code. Right. Walking. Everything is new. Is different for the second fight. Man. Okay. Good. So I'm like making the time of a warm up, getting walking the ramp, getting the ice, me and Wally. Right. You know, we're like, I'm freaking out. And finally, we can, like, 10 Japanese staff from the fight try to get him to the ramp, and he just taking his time forever. <laughs> and we finally got in the staff. It's like, here we go. Here <laughs> we go. I forgot we gotta change the, the shoelace. No. I'm like, what do you mean? Now this shoelace is green. Now I want yellow. I'm like, no, bro, come, <laughs> come on. on. <laughs> come on, bro. Just play your music, JC. Dude, it was hard to convince that guy to walk in there. He did. So he walked in with his He green. walked with that, but I can tell he was dancing less. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> He's swinging less. Look at me. All right. Someone tell me when JC's birthday is. I'll get him some yellow shoelaces. Yeah. Just for the hell of it. I don't know if you remember that, but yeah. Remember <laughs> that day. It's going to be one of those stories. He's like, oh, yeah. Why the fuck did you let me go up there without my yellow shoelaces? Yeah. What's wrong with you? Look for old footage and fancy. That's crazy. That's pretty funny, though. But no, so wait. So Bigfoot forgot his shorts. Jay-Z decides to, he has to have yellow shoelaces. And then there was another one where you won the fight, you won the championship, and then you got to go party with Putin. Oh, yeah. Which play was that? That was, uh, no, that was a uh, Russian, right. Moscow. Bro, I was walking. I used to, I, yeah, I had a fight against, it was US against Russia. Bulldog fight. Oh, the Bulldogs, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Fedor, Fedor Milenko did beat a, a super fight with um, Matt Lindley. Yeah. So, that was like the, also the main card. This guy, Andrea Lovisky. So, I'm walking the ramp, GZ myself. <laughs> In Russia, can you tell how many <laughs> say no for to walk in the rest? No, yeah, just like you are below the crowd. You're too dark to come in. Here. No, not here, not here. <laughs> Fuck. You're gonna get curious. Okay, so walking the ramp, they're playing my music, and in the middle of the ramp, they told me to get back, get back, get back with this nice right. cops with pebbles, right? You know, those skinny pebbles, they can fight yeah. a lot. <laughs> like JC was like, relax, I go, just back up. <laughs> Listen to music. <laughs> Jay Z was when I turn my back, they are playing another song. So Putin was coming in together with the president of his, uh, Italy. Right. And John uh, uh, Van Damme. John Claude Van Damme. Yeah, I was like, what the fuck? What a combination. Like, what the fuck three is three that? guys, <laughs> what they're doing together, you know? Right. So he walked in, sit in the first line. Then they play my music to come in. Like nobody was. Yeah, it was like 2006, 2005. Yeah, so it's like Berlusconi or something like that. So I'm not surprised him with uh, with Putin. Nobody saw him. That fight, I won the fight in the story. Every winner has to be. He has a gift after to right. dinner with Putin and he gives a golden golden ring. Right. Well, I got my ring, you know. I mean, I watch this on the Fuck out of here. <laughs> you gonna, you gonna, we gonna get killed, let's you get know? the fuck out of here. Yeah, let's go. No, relax. I go, no, man, I'm not relaxed. I'm not gonna do anything. There's not no drinking, no water for anybody. <laughs> no, people are giving me looks, man. I'm like fuck. Yeah. Yeah. Well it's probably they're like, oh, so you think you're a fighter, huh? Yeah. Yeah. No, you think you come here, I'm not my friend out Do you still have that ring? Still have the ring. I gotta see this ring. You gotta bring it in. Yeah, I gotta see this thing. It's a nice ring. That's funny as hell. 
So what? How long were you out there at the party for? Because I'm guessing. No, what like, thing was different? The the the, 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 the after party was different. Well, it was like like a private. No, man, I was there for five minutes. Oh, I really? got my ring and buy. <laughs> <laughs> you really didn't want to risk it. No, I didn't. Back to the hotel. Then I went to the after party, but still, I was still. You know, like, you know what? I can't get too much. Yeah. I can get too much fun here. Yeah, <laughs> you definitely get caught up in yeah. some trouble. So, I mean, you, you know, you did the tournaments, and then you also have done just a regular one fight a night. What do you think really worked out better for you? Do you really think that the tournament style is, might be something that people should go back to? Like, I know Ryzen did that. They had like two, two nights of fights, three nights of fight or something like that. Three nights of, yeah. I, I, I like it. I know I love it. To be honest, I love it. I, it just reminds me of Jiu Jitsu. Yeah. <laughs> you fight more than one time. Yes, yeah, so you fight more, more, more than one time. I think the rules has to play out. You know, in a good way because you can go, you can fight 25 minutes and come back and get another fight. But the, the, the tournaments that I made was two rounds of five in strike force. Actually, in Japan, was really three rounds of five minutes. Yeah. Fortunately, I didn't have to go. Oh, five, but yeah. yeah. So uh, you you see it from the fighter's point of view, you see it from the coach's point of view, and you've been, you know, a mainstay and through the whole evolution of the last what 10 15 years of, yeah, of jiu-jitsu and mma like do you really think that the evolution has gotten to a good point or do you think like there's a lot of problems going on right now because you see all the stuff that goes mm-hmm. on i know you check out from mma but you see everything that goes on and i think back like i remember when i got invited for the adcc in barcelona yeah so we were there talking, I remember Pablo Popovich was saying, you know, the Jiu Jitsu is going to be on TV, you know, it's going to be much bigger than I was just laughing. This guy is really big. Right. You know? I saw the way he, he was growing, and I thought it could be better than this, you know, it just, it, it just sucks. It yeah. just, it, it's, not, it's not good, it's bad, it's really bad. People are being, yeah, having like, uh, Different point of view. They they play. It's like TV. They putting a lot of shit in your face that you get you distracted for the whole scenario that's happening. Like, well, as some fighters, I see that some fighters now putting themselves out there. Why are we not making money? Yeah. So finally, you know. Yeah. I mean, I was making more money in Japan. Yeah. In two thousand seven, than people are making now fighting for belts, yeah. like weights. That's true. It just sucks, you know. Yeah. Not having pay per view. How big? Oh, look how big they are, you know. Is and it, now I see the opposite. Now I see Jiu Jitsu way bigger. Yeah. The MMA, the MMA just is done. I think to me, I could be wrong, you know. These guys, they know what they're doing. I, yeah. I laugh when I said about the TV network for the UFC now. Yeah. But I think that you uh, Jiu Jitsu is gonna jump high now in in the world. You know. It's yeah. gonna be real big. You know? Well, I mean, it, it is more of the the chess game and things like that. I I can definitely see like the the UFC model kind of like collapsing just because they've abused the fighters for too long. Yeah. Like I get it in the, like the first like few years where it had to build and it had to grow and things like that. And everybody had to bite yeah, them. And that's something that I that I I I never. I mean, I start fighting. It wasn't it wasn't because of the money at all. Yeah. He just wanted it. I just I like it. Yeah. I just. I just knew because the money will come because I need to do make I, I will make a good work and I will make the money, but I never was because the money. Of course, you you need the money to keep going this thing, but when I went to UFC my first time in two thousand four, I was I knew already like this is not the way. Yeah. I hate it. Like two thousand four the way they used to treat the fighters. Yeah. It was just like fucked up. You like, know, like give me an example of something that they did. Man, they treat they treat the fighter like shit, they, like a horse. Yeah. You know, you gotta be this time at this place, right? And you can't say shit. It's a comment. Yeah. And I mean, it's true. You and can't I, say and I've seen it. I've seen it first person. Yeah. You can't see this. Yeah. Or you take or you go home. Well, that's what they're doing now with Demetri Johnson. Yeah, it's like a. I mean, the good part is the fighters now have gotten like the the power to be able to kind of turn the tables back. Be like, no, I'm not gonna fight it. Because then they know they could just go to some other organization now and make money. 
I'm not saying people are fighters who's supposed to be treated like divas, but like, bro, come on. They're treated yeah. like human beings. Yeah, but yeah, like at least like human beings, you know, their rights to do stuff. I you mean, know? you get boxers that are like, that nobody will know, and they're making more money. More money, yeah. you know, they're being recognized as a, the, all the hard work they do behind the scenes to, to be in the show, you know. Yeah. Japan is the same. You can tell how they respect, how they look up for the fighters, you know. Yeah. Uh, WWE, like everything, the system is. I I start enjoying more watching all the stuff now because the way they create their stuff. And like, yeah. the, I I never liked WWE. Yeah. Well, now you yeah. like the storyline. I start liking a lot and respect a lot because we entertain them. You know. Yeah. They know how to do it before. It was Muhammad Ali was doing before. Yeah. He was well, putting on the show. He was this, like putting movie. on the show ain't getting the money from the show, you know? Yeah. There's a lot of stuff around it and people don't see. You know, it, it, it's sad because it's out there on TV and the majority of people just don't. Yeah. The blood, when the blood comes off, yeah. But I mean, you're still getting kind of, I think people are still getting educated and more and more people now are educated as oh. to what is jujitsu, what is judo. And you can start separating things off. Yeah. Like, before people didn't know MMA, nobody no, knew jiu yeah, You do UFC, I you, yeah. you do UFC. You do. <laughs> tell you how I train tap out, you know. Mm -hmm. So then now you're you were saying that you're focusing more on jujitsu and your your real love of jujitsu and judo is kind of coming back more. So how do you how do you push that towards when you're teaching now? Like, do you still see as a just you want to keep things pure jujitsu? Like the way that you first learned it, or do you see like, well, I'm gonna tweak this because I remember this works for me more in MMA, and it's more applicable. No, I, I'm teaching jujitsu really for lifestyle. Right. I want the people get to see, you know, lifestyle, you know, of jujitsu, you know, of everything, the value I learned it before to go to the gym to love, to socialize, to see my friends. We're not competing with anybody. You know? Yeah. We have in a healthy, you surround surrounded by a healthy environment, you know, friends enjoy having their family, see their family coming in, you know, and I'm into me now teaching, uh, I'm not even focused on 10% of my, my academy in competition. Yeah. Fortunately, I was a very technical fighter. I'm not, I'm not talking much about myself, you know, I'm not saying I'm not, yeah. but uh, I was, I was, very technical, and I, and I know a lot of jiu-jitsu. Yeah. I, I consider myself high-level jiu-jitsu, and my game, when I get back, it just fits good with the one they're doing right now. Right. Some guys are lost after they came back from jiu-jitsu. Yeah. But most, and more, but more, the most important for me when I teach, I need to make clear to my student what I'm teaching. Yeah. I need to know, I need them to understand what they're doing. Right. I don't like to put anybody like to do something. Why I'm learning this? I wanted them to have a good understanding. Oh, this is for you. I want to teach a clean jujitsu. Yeah. You know, that's what I, I want to do for my students. You know, and have fun. Come here and have fun. You know, that's all. No, it is. It's definitely a lot of fun coming in here. I know. Like, I mean, obviously, I've been trading on and off with you for the past few years and had other coaches and stuff like that, but. You know, obviously, you're you're one of those people that is always willing to teach. Like we sat there even in uh, when we went to the UFC Sao Paulo two years ago, say like two o'clock in the morning. I could sit there and still ask you questions about jujitsu, and then we train and roll for like an hour. Yeah. Like get my ass kicked, but you're you're someone that's always willing to teach as long as the person is willing to actually pay attention and learn. Of course, yeah. yeah. Teaching now, teaching now, I, I, the dynamic of classes are different, you know. I, so I spend a lot of time doing my program, based on clarity, you know. I want them to understand what they're doing, why they're doing, the dynamics of the training, having fun doing the training. Yeah. You know, I, of course, I'm going to get some students that want to dig into details of training. Yeah. So that is the other thing, the 10% that I told you. Yeah. The competition. Uh, let's take on the side. Let's go deeper yeah. on this thing. But I, I, I want everybody to come here. The sixty years old come here, train good, go back home, have a good life with his family. A teenager, a guy with twenty years old, 
have a hard training here. Yeah. And the kids have a chance. It's funny. My, my son is here. My wife is here. All the families are here. I want to teach to everybody. Competing? True. You know, yeah. I'm not focusing. My focus is not competition. Right. I love it. It's a lot of, it's hard for me because I love competing. Yeah. I still have fun teaching the uh, focus. I, yeah. still, I still go in the fights with Kamaru. Yeah. I still go into the to gyms and well, you just the Miami Open. Yeah, yeah, Miami Open, yeah. And you have uh, one of your students as well, one, one. in his division, Tiago. Yeah. So let me ask you a question then. I know that you're saying you don't focus a lot on the competition, but when you do sit there and start looking into the competition mind frame or students that are interested in doing the competition, do you ever really take into consideration what the trends are in as far as jiu-jitsu? Like for a couple of years, the big thing was you got to do the beer and bolo. You have to do beer and bolo like, and have to be a master at it and you'll automatically win tournaments. Mm -hmm. And now it's everyone's worried about leg locks. Like I know I've asked you a million questions about mm -hmm. leg locks, but everyone that does no gi and all those other kind of tournaments, they're all worried about the leg locks. Do you ever really take that into consideration or do you just – Go about your, oh, no, your for way. sure, for sure I do. I I, I wanted to show them. Like I said, it's, it's been six months. I got a lot of students from some other place. The students I, that I've been teaching more than a year now, they have pretty much kind of my game. But I I, I always want to do the same thing. Uh, I'm not the same thing, but the, the basics, the fun, fundamentals, you know, the foundation of Jiu Jitsu. It's still the same. Yeah. They're still the same. I will teach you very important, but you gotta know every inch of the language. Yeah. I want you to understand, you know, because I won't waste my time. Like I said to the guys here, here in the gym, from here to from Boyton to Miami, it's a 95. That's Jiu Jitsu. Yeah. Let's put an eight exit. Yeah. Take down east. You know, pulling guard west. Yeah. Then I go for passing guard, sweeping, mounting yeah. back. That's only you're gonna pass to ninety five always. Yeah. So you gotta be always doing pass for this place. Yeah. You gotta know what it is, everything. What it is pulling guard, what it is taking down, sweeping, passing, all every inch, you know, and I will give the, the freedom to create yourself. Because right. that that restaurant by the beach that you just the, those are the good tricks. Everybody yeah. wants to get there, but you need to pass through ninety five. Yeah, you gotta you gotta you gotta go crawl here. Crawl before you walk. Crawl before, before you, you walk. walk. Yeah. yeah, but you will get there, and I will help them. Believe me, what you're learning now, you you will use forever. Yeah. So let's say you do get back into really big competition. Is there? A tournament you feel is doing like the better like rules because I know we talked about you know you're not a big fan maybe of like just the point systems like IBJJF would you rather do a, a submission only or stuff like EBI like EBI now is kind of like combat jujitsu where they allow like open handed slaps like do you think that there is a, a real perfect system out there right now? Um, no, I don't think that the perfect system. Everybody was not lean towards their what they like to see the most yeah. the organization. I I would like to see, I don't know how they could do that, but I in Jiu Jitsu they make it more dynamic fight, fights, you know, matches. Right. I I don't know, maybe I agree with the maybe six six minutes. Yeah. Instead of ten minutes round uh matches for black belt, maybe you can make it more dynamic. It's evolution of the sport, you know. If you don't try to run, you will be behind. Yeah. And so you know, but I don't think there's a best, better system. I just have a different style, you know. And everybody should play, be on their feelings, yeah. tours, you know. But I, I like to see uh, IBJF. I would like to see with the better rules for, 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 the, the, tournament. for the tournament for the black belts, you know. So do you? Um... If you look at the way that the that Jiu Jitsu is really kind of playing itself out now, you know, you are from the original class of guys that did everything, like you learned Jiu Jitsu and then you started going into MMA, but now you're going from MMA to Jiu Jitsu. Now you're seeing all these Jiu Jitsu people that were just doing Jiu Jitsu. Mm -hmm. 
going into MMA. Oh man, confused with me. Why? It breaks my heart. No. <laughs> because I know where they're going. You know. That's what I'm saying. Being a fighter, being a coach, a little bit of manager. Yeah. You had to deal with uh, matchmakers. Yeah. From all the big tournaments and see from them and hear, hear from them what they want. You pretty much can tell all the coaches they can tell them. You never say that. They never would admit that, but they know when the guy stops saying if you he will be that guy. Yeah. If he's gonna be like actually. He will good fit or... this he will he will fit the system or, or not. Right. You gotta that's what you that's a reality. You, you know. By here, the matchmakers is just brutal, bro. Yeah. They're, 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 it's almost like they want to they throw you in your face. Body. Look, this is what I need. That's how much I want to do. And if you don't want it, yeah, it is what it is. But you it's know? Like, I mean, at the end of the day, they they are going for the money. There's like they are going for the money, money but they but they're picked on their what they want to have it, you know. And and I see some guys from Jiu Jitsu come to you to 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 the fights. I'm like, man. You're not gonna make money, bro. Yeah. You know, I don't think you're gonna you're gonna make way more money in in jiu jitsu. Yeah. It's unfair, man. These guys are not getting paid. They're using their whole money with the with the camps. Yeah. To spend the rest of the year. Yeah. It's they like don't get hurt. hurt. Yeah. And in taxes. And they don't the taxes. A lot of fighters they don't know how to deal with that. Yeah, and then the next thing you know, they're they're twice as broke. Twice they as think broke. they won like their biggest payday, and then all of a sudden they realize, yeah, it's different. Like that's that is true. Like that's the biggest part is that a lot of people don't realize. Like if you're doing a jujitsu tournament, and you're going out, even if it's a super fight, you're probably not really paying like your coach. You you don't need a corner man. You know, you yeah. might pay like a coach or a friend to come with you, whatever you pay the fight, the hotel, but you're never really paying them for their services. Yeah, for the camp. But when you're going, uh, doing a UFC fight, an MMA fight, or Bellator, or whatever, you have a whole camp of people that are coming with you. You need to have your coach. You're going to have your, your striking coach or your wrestling coach, and then you maybe, if you have like Condition a nutrition coach, you have nutrition, a doctor, nutrition. Yeah, you got a lot of and stuff. And they all need to get paid. You, you got to pay them for, for coming. And then. You might have to do like a per diem. A lot of guys will do like the per diem, like, hey guys, like this is for uh -huh. you while you're here. Like, so before you even start the fight, you're already in the hole. You're in the half, you have. And then, God forbid, like, okay, you win, then you gotta pay your manager. Like there's 10, 15, 20%, whatever deal you get screwed on with. So you're, at the end of the day, even if you're making, if you win, you know, 25 to show, 25 to win, your $50,000 all of a sudden comes down to like 10,000, 5,000. Yes, for sure. Compared to if you do a, a jiu-jitsu match, you're doing a tournament, five grand, and you're only doing two or three and matches, done. and you don't come out with a concussion, hopefully. And it also, you don't come out with a concussion, you already, you paint the train in the gym, you know, you're still having fun, you're not getting your ass kicked. Yeah. I, it, and most like you doing jujitsu, you got your finance figure out already. Right? Yeah. But what right? about like you got guys like Damian Maya? Like Damian Maya is moving. You actually That's beat different. Damian Maya. That's a lot of people don't know. You beat Damian Maya. Didn't you fight Damian Maya? I fought. Oh, you yeah. 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 You beat yeah, Damian Maya. So. Yeah. so, I mean, then you see how he grew. Like, and now he's. Finally... I beat because I thought I beat. But the UFC didn't give me the win. You know that. Oh, okay. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm no. sorry. Well, I thought I won. <laughs> But I mean, you see someone like him that was a a pure jujitsu fighter, and he took forever to get really his striking under wraps, and now he's going up for the title. So, do you think that's still kind of like a like a bad thing for jujitsu? Like it kind of gives a bad example, or how do you kind of see it? No, they don't give much recognition of of jujitsu. No, yeah. they don't want to. That's something. Uh, that's the same. You are watching TV, the most people are watching. They don't know what's going on. They're yeah. not fighting etiquette. They don't know. They know blood. Yeah. Swallowing, you know. They know. They don't know what you Who cares? They I think care you know, it only comes up when it, now it's like, oh, for self defense. Which is not bad. It's not bad, but uh, they don't understand, you know. Yeah. I'm actually happy for them, you know. He, for us, it's, we are proud of him because he really represents Jiu Jitsu. Yeah. yeah 100% is the, the biggest guy right there. He's not getting. He's not even getting the recognition. Yeah. He's not fighting for the title. That's what I'm saying. The system. 
Yeah, well, now then, he's going to be fighting. He don't way. fit the system. No. Unfortunately, he doesn't fit the system. So it's why? Right. Like, the, I see it almost like... We all know that. Yeah. But it's kind of like the, the old UFC setup where it was like, you know, style versus style. You know, and he's... Obviously, he's adapted, but at the end of the day, he still comes down. He, I mean, his hands have gotten better. Yeah, his striking's gotten a lot better, but he's still going to take you down, choke the shit out of you. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's what would have happened at UFC 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's oh, the same yeah. kind of thing. It's the same kind of thing. Do, do they want that? No. No. I mean, he, he, don't, talk, he don't talk much as she does call him McGregor does. Yeah. No. But I think, I think, <laughs> I hope that he takes advantage at least on this fight because he's going to fight Tyron Woodley for the, uh-huh. for the belt. Yeah, so cool. hopefully he takes Finally. advantage. Yeah. Finally, yeah. I'm a man. He's happy. I know. I'm happy for him because he's happy. What yeah. he's, also, he's also, from from when I fought him, he wasn't doing it for, for the fans. He was doing it for himself. It was a personal goal. You know, that's why. I'm happy, you know. It just sucks because some other kids, they're kind of fighting UFC with a different mindset. Yeah. yeah everybody, you know, some yeah, kind of rock they want to do for, yeah, they want to be a rock star. Yeah. You know, Danny wants to do what he wants to do. Yeah, he doesn't He knows what he wants. You know, he doesn't care what people think. I think a couple of guys always want to come in and want to be a rock star, and then they, like, they get a little older, they realize, like, shit, I got to actually pay my bill. Yeah, I got to. Like, afford. being a rock star is one thing, but paying the bills makes you a lot bitter. Oh, man. Where are we at? Uh all right, good. So, what do you got planned as far as for the rest of the year, as far as your your jujitsu is concerned? Do you have any uh, super fights or anything you're gonna do? Any big tournaments? Nothing, man. My super fight it was a, it was a gym. Yeah. <laughs> when I was a kid and I did dedicated full time here, I'm still supporters of MMA fighters. Kamara, of course, he always I was gonna be with him. He's here training also with me, but. My brother, my friends, I will always be on by their side whenever they need. But my main focus right here now, and I still want to. I will fight the words, you know. I want to fight the words. Yeah, that's one thing. So that's one thing that drove me crazy. What? I supposed to win the words. The last year, Jiu Jitsu. Last year, I, I would have. I, I wanted to win last year. Yeah. But like when I was doing Jiu Jitsu. Yeah. I was doing finals with Raj. I was doing finals with Verdun. Yeah. Purple go, and I was getting there. Then I got promoted, and let's go for the make. That's something I never done. Oh, you kind of got it taken away. From I you. have it. I have it stuck in my my heart. <laughs> so I need to be a word. No, I'm doing now. I'm yeah. just. I'm doing. I'm gonna even master. Still, I want to be a world champion. That's my goal. You know, that's some fighting. Yeah. But now I have the gym. It things come in the right time. Right. So, okay, even if I have to swallow one more time, I, last year I did, I did everything best way I could, right? because I'm still teaching, doing my other obligations, not like before you just training for jiu-jitsu, but I have family, but I, I want to, even if I go master two, three, four, five, or six, but I, I want to be a world champion. You're in a good spot, because at the end of the day, you're still going to be competing against it's the same guys that were like winning worlds and stuff like that. Yeah. They're they're just, they got older, yeah. too. It so the competition doesn't change. It's just everybody got a little older. Yep. That's right. I went, that's why I went there, too. Yeah. I look at them, oh, you guys are there. I want to fight you. Right. I want to compete against you. But I know, I know we talked about it the other day. Did you ever get a chance to, to watch any of the matches from worlds? My matches? No, no, the oh. matches from this past weekend. Yes, I watched all of them. I'm not all of them, but the finals, I was home, but I was watching a lot of fights. I loved it. I loved it. You know, and what do you think about uh, the Romulo match when he like dislocated his foot? Like he wasn't, he wasn't gonna tap. That's him, man. I see him like I saw him like my own eyes sometimes all the time. His knee, you know, his tournament. He had a lot of passion, you know. Uh, that's that's. I, I have a couple guys in jiu-jitsu that I always look up to, you know. That's one of the guys I was like, you know what? I really like that guy, man. Yeah. Like I'm kind of like I'm his fan. Yeah. I'm like man, I like the way he fights, you know. I was Maya before I even thought about fighting Maya. Maya was doing that, and I was doing MMA, and uh, jiu-jitsu still. Yeah. I remember saying to Liboro, Liboro in Pahompa, man. I like that guy, Daniel Maya. I think his game fits good in MMA. Right. 
like way back in the day, you know, some guys I always looked to look up to him. In Barhao, I seen, I saw him all the time. He's he has a lot of heart, man. He yeah. really loves it. Dude. Would you uh, would you tap in that situation? Or would you? I like, think I would too. You know, really, you really love you. You do what you love, man. You don't you don't have to think, man. And it, there's no pain over there. But wait, let me what? ask you a question. Now. Would you let your foot get snapped like that in a finals match or in like the semifinals? Like, I mean, it wasn't a finals match. Either way, man. You, bro, you could tell he was there holding that foot. The other foot was there until the end because you know when the, the time was gone. Yeah, they wouldn't know which one they were giving it that they win. Yeah, he was so compromised. He was so he was in focus of his of what he wants to do. You don't feel, you don't think, you just react. You know that's that's how much love you got into the thing. Yeah, just focus. It doesn't matter. Control. You know, yeah, you're fighting for your life every day. Every fight for him is like it's serious. It's a final. Yeah, you can tell. That's like instant, uh, instant anyway. He always says like, don't go into a training or like a fight like you're willing to die. You gotta be, yeah. yeah. I I got these one hundred percent. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm gonna, I'm willing to die today. Like we, you know, I used to fight in Japan. When I fought Mizaki, all of the fights from Mizaki, yeah. and Mizaki, those are crazy fights. I'm like, I'm willing to die today. But you won. Is the first one was the one that you won at the last minute. The last minute, I was losing. Like the last minute of the fight. I have so much faith in my heart. Like Jay Z told me, I had a broken hand. Yeah. My hand was broke. The whole, my whole camp was doing jab. Yeah. And. Yeah, doing jabs, switch, switch stance, and using my left hand as a right hand, like a, right. across it. Right, right. Uh, bro, it was like the fourth round. Oh, we can I could hear like the Saitama Super Arena, like 16,000 16, people. Every time the like was kicking my leg, hey, yeah. Wait, I'm like, <laughs> bro, not for Shut a up. second. Not, not, not even for a second, I lost the faith. Right. I'm going to win this shit. I don't know how. I'm going to win. I'm going right. to win. I never doubt it, you know, that's that's the kind of commitment I like to see in fighters, you know. Yeah. But how I can see that. I yeah. can tell like I know how is it how is it feeling. You can you can't stop a guy like that. So do you do you remember that last minute of the fight or was it kind of all like a blur? No, I remember. That's the first fight. I remember, yeah. But man, how am I gonna win this thing? I have one. I don't have hand. Yeah. I have only one hand. I'm losing bad. Let me try to take it out. I don't know. You know. I mean, sometimes we don't know. We just react to stuff. But I, that one, my second fight with Mizaki, it was just completely mess. Yeah, that was my life. <laughs> the story of my life in one fight, up and down. You knock the guy down. You're about to finish the guy. All of a sudden, he was almost finished me. I was knocked down, jumping off the ropes. Yeah, I was jumping off the ropes to not get the fight stopped. We should uh, we should do like one of those days where we just watch the video and just record you commentating on like your own fight. It'd be fun to sit there and, and kind of hear you analyze your own fight and kind of yeah, see how you're doing. Fun, yeah, I know for sure. <laughs> when I talk with Jay Z, he wants to kill. Man, there's a couple fights. Of, I'm telling you, there's a couple of fight of my fights. Uh -huh. I got off the fight, and then like for half an hour, I've been yelled Boy. by my corners after the fight. Yeah, <laughs> motherfucker, why did you do that? Why did you do that? Man. <laughs> you know, you got to do the same thing, though. I'm just like the top, like, could not feel anything? I'm like, hey, man, stop. <laughs> <laughs> the belt there, shut up. <laughs> we got the belt. We got the belt, motherfucker. Like, Pahupa, Jay-Z. Who won the conditioning coach? Ben K. Wally. Yeah. Wally are the kind of man, that's that's what I like. That's what I love to see also. That's speaking about coach. You see he put his he put his heart in there. Yeah. Like Charlie, Charlie, bad intentions, bad intention. He wants something for you. You losing! Yeah, like man, come on. Is it, is it, I suppose we're resting here right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like after the fights, like we're done here. We can it's game's over, we can relax. Why? Well, yeah, the whole trip to the hotel was just analyzing the fight, the fight, what it should be, what it should have done. Right. And it was... Which is, it's not what to saying. do, but not... That's what, that's what I'm saying, like, the titles that I got, the, 
Let me see that I win. You remember more of those stuff. Yeah. Those guys, they were there with you. The, the bad the bad times. You remember more of the bad times. Yeah. Remember, I was broke. I didn't have a dollar, man. Yeah. He got off from there with $60,000. You know, the, those people, the, much, the, a lot of the, the amount of work you put into it, you know, you remember more than the titles. You know? the, the whole journey is worth it. Man. Yeah, it's like the eight week camp for 15 minutes of glory. Yeah. You're, you're only going to remember the eight months, not the 15 minutes. So, is there a fight that you, that maybe you lost that you know if you like ran it back, you did it again, you know you'd end up winning? Or do you ever even think about that kind of stuff? No, I, I think all the fight. I mean, I had a period more, uh, of time in MMA. I was I was a very talented kid. I didn't work hard enough, right, for my fights. You know, jujitsu. I jujitsu. I work a lot. MMA. I came to America very young and and <coughs> tried this thing in MMA. You know, so I didn't put everything. When my daughter was about to born, then I took it very seriously. Yeah. Then the money was yeah. real. The money had a purpose. Then I'm like, you know what? I, I need to do this now for real. Right. Let's go to Russia and fuck this guy up. <laughs> <laughs> let's go party with Putin. Really? Let's really? Party. Yeah. Let's go party with Putin. <laughs> <laughs> so I got, I got fired from UFC. I got in UFC from nowhere because I was a talent kid. I never trained. I lost. And now we got to make this thing. Let's go. Yeah. I made it the whole time. When I went back from Japan to you to the United States to UFC, I didn't want to fight anymore. Just over. I didn't give a shit about it. Plus, I hate UFC. <laughs> I always hated UFC. You just yeah, I mean yeah, since you were like ahead of the curve to begin with. Right, yeah, I'm like ah I need to make some money here. I was just fighting because of the money. Yeah. That's one thing I regret. Make make those fights with that attitude. Right. You know, I don't want nobody to do that, like fighters. Right, right. You come to a surviving thing. Yeah. You don't want to, you don't want to, you don't want to, yeah, you don't want to. Yeah. Being a talent, being a talent guy going to a fight in 4K was different than I have to fight because of the money. That sucks. You know, I did it. So that's why, that's why you were asking, like, how there's some fights you regret. Yeah. You should have done better. Those are the fights I should have not done at all. Right. That makes sense. You know, yeah. those those are the ones. When I went to UFC fighting Brian Stan, all the guys, I wasn't there. Yeah. I was, I, I, like I said, you see yourself where you at. Close your eyes. You feel it. I didn't feel it. Yeah, you just went. And I knew already. Yeah. And I knew already. Right. You got to be a man to admit that because I was there, like, I'm not seeing, I don't see myself. I used to, one time I think I was with Eddie Albers. Yeah. Why, how you were like, like that? And why do you think right now, like Eddie, let me put it the best way. I see my fight now with the family, fighting because on the side. What I was doing that fight and how much passion that I had, I don't have that passion no more to do what I was, yeah. to do what I was doing that time. The fire is there. The fire is just, Got burnt, you know. I got to a point that I, I got what I want. It was a ja Japanese belt, and have no desire to yeah. fight UFC at all. But I was there for the big chat. Yeah. So I wouldn't mean, give him one hundred percent. Yeah, no, it's true. I mean, that's like AJ. Like when he sat there and said, "It's like I just, it's not in me. It's not. I'm just. I was good at it, and that's what I did it. And now I'm out." You don't know, man. You don't know. You don't know. People, we judge a lot, but we don't know. Yeah. If he's right or wrong. That's on him. Yeah, it's on him. It's all on him. You know? No, it's his life. Man. Yeah, yeah, it's your life. You made the decisions. Yeah. So, is there any fight though that, let's say, like at the peak of like even like the the Japanese fights, that in your mind you're like, I want to have this fight. Like, I want to do this fight. Like, there's a fight that you never got that you wish you would have gotten. In Japan, or in general, I wanted to fight Cam from Rock that time. Yeah, really bad. That's a guy I remember. I wanted to fight you. Oh, and then um, in Japan, I wanted to fight the guy uh, from Judo. I came from Judo, so I wanted to fight. I fought Nakamura. He's a uh, he's sensei. Big guy. Uh, 
I forgot. Nah, dude, there's no way I'm gonna remember that. Oh yeah. Yeah. I forgot. Like I'm more if I. So you would have wanted in like a, a judo fight, like a judo match. No, no, MMA yeah. fight. Yeah. I went there and I want to fight these Japanese. Here. Oh, also Sakuraba. I always wanted to fight Sakuraba. That'd be cool. That would have been. I always awesome fight. wanted to fight Sakuraba. Like man. What about a jiu-jitsu match with Sakuraba? Also, both of them. Well, you know, even the, fun, more fun. The guys from uh, what was it one championship offered Eddie Bravo a uh, a jiu-jitsu match with Sakuraba. But, oh. I mean, Eddie can't do it because his back is messed up. So Call me. I go tomorrow. I take the fight. Man, yeah. I, love, I would love can I, it. Can I corner that fight? Yes, let's go. <laughs> I'll be your corner. I'm just going to sit there and be like, where do you, George? Where is you? <laughs> what is you want to see? China? No. Uh, I want to say like the Philippines, like Thailand, Thailand yeah. Indonesia. Uh, that's where um, Herbert fights. He's, uh, he's one of Let's season. go. Yeah. We'll go surf. Uh, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> I'm down for that, huh? Singapore. Singapore, yeah, oh, that's Singapore. right, Singapore. Perfect. Yeah. Right. And, and, like, Herbert's got people there, so you can definitely crash there for, like, a week. I say we... I'm oh, we got a lot of... We know a lot of people there. Yeah. yeah. You crash there. I, plus, I'm, I'm thinking, man, I would love to find something. Did I just get you excited with that? Yes. I, that'd be kind of dope. I mean, look, I would definitely be there. Bro. I, I would kind of try and kind of kickstart just some drama and say that you should get your own, like, wrestling mask. So you guys could both come in with the rest of the mask? But that's just me. I think it'd be kind of cool. That'd be cool. It'd be right. cool. I can't think of anything not right now, but yes, I'm up for the show. <laughs> <laughs> just want to have you walking in with like your own wrestling mask, just kind of as like a jab to Sakuraba? Yeah. Hell yeah. I got to come out. We got to come up with something. But for sure, man, I would play that. I'll, yeah, to, I'll definitely like, I'll, yeah, right? Just a big axe. Like, so a big axe on my face. Just like a Brazilian like, so. flag. A Zeno flag, I would wear my, my board shorts. Oh man. Look, i you just give me the word, I will shoot emails today. Man, man, and see if we bro, can make that happen. I used to have I it in the mask. That'd be a cool and I mean you could probably do it here too. I mean if you do like a, a Sakuraba match, right uh jiu jitsu. We can do it. I love it. Yeah. I don't know if we can gonna make it happen, Joe. Let's make it happen, we make it happen. All right, so I'll, 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 literally, no, I'll literally shoot some emails today and see if we can make it happen. It'd be kind of cool. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, you're still you're still well-known in Japan. Oh, yeah, no, of course. So, I mean, at the end of the day, Singapore Japan would love that. And they definitely would love to sit there and bring you back in. Like, can you imagine? Come on. The George Santiago come back to it? Bro, well, let's go. Let's All rock right. this back. I'll shoot. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to type it on my phone right now. I'm just going to sit there. And... I got a friend texting me now. Yeah, just so he knows I'm here. He's like, you were George? Like, he's one of my favorite MMA guys from Japan. Oh, I'm telling you. I'll sit there. On. I'll shoot that email. I'll shoot that email today. What time is it in Singapore right now? Like, yeah. close to 11 a.m. So yeah. Like yeah, because it's old. You sit there. I'll talk to so Herbert. So Herbert's got the connection. Oh, really? Yeah. So fun. That'd be kind of cool. Um, I'd say I'd help you train on there, but I got all I like, all I can do is just stand there. Whoa. How much did how much did he weigh? Do you remember? Sakuraba? Yeah. He he was smaller. He always fought higher than he yeah. was. Because I mean, no, like, he's like he won he's big. He's like two hundred pounds. Like, because yeah, that's what threw me off. Because two two hundred five. You fought at two two hundred five. He yeah. weighs one eighty seven. Yeah, uh, that's Joe Armas, by the way. For he was the guy. If you guys hear in the background taking photos, he's Superman. Yeah, <laughs> aka yeah. Superman. Um. Yeah, because they, they wanted him to fight Eddie Bravo, and Eddie Bravo is not a big guy. So I'm just kind of curious as to how the like they would end up pulling that off. Like, I mean, no side. offense to to Sensei Sakuraba, but no, I think he the weight. Uh, we can get it. Then. Yeah, we do. Yeah, I mean, better for you because then you don't have to cut. <laughs> uh, no, no cutting weight no more. My, every my life we fight with the you same. You don't win it. No, I don't want to. Sakuraba doesn't cut either. So yeah, yeah. Well, it would be good. It's just show up. That's about as that's as roots, grassroots jujitsu as you can get. Just show up and you fight. Bring your style, bring my style, let's just go. Man. What's the worst weight cake you ever did? Like what's the most amount of weight you had to cut? Ah oh, man, fifteen. Fifteen pounds. That's too bad, right? I don't know, I was first king already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, there's like the photos of you with the sunglasses and the board shorts like uh, No, I did he in America for I went for Jer uh, Harris. So Harris uh, at the uh, uh, some show. Sure. Right. I hate it. That was the last one. Yeah. Yeah. Don't wait, cuts. 
Never again. It's like, so when you see all the guys like cutting weights and like you're helping them out, like so happy you don't have to be well, No, I don't even see one. I, I don't even want to see them. Yeah. I, well, I go with Kamara looking, cutting weight, and I'm like, okay. But I mean, Never. and even with him, he's a wrestler, so he's used to like cutting weight. He used to, he used to cut so. 13 pounds a day. Yeah. Two days, but man. Not too many. I tried that once and I did it like, like the dumbest way possible. Never again. I'll go ahead and fight someone like well, Chad Ban, I used to fight my own weight. Yeah. 185. I used to walk around 188, 189. Right. So going back to the, the Japan fights, you know, there's always the rumors like they literally said on like the contracts and big letters, like we don't <laughs> test. Like was that yes, for real? That's for real. We don't test. That's so crazy to me. Yeah. Like, but I mean, at the end of the day, they were putting on shows. They knew what was going on, dude. Yeah, they one and one day we have tests. They cut like a cough cup. He's here. <laughs> Listen, they're just really? going through the motions. <laughs> Are you really doing that? <laughs> yeah, cough. Really, the guy from the cough machine. He's here. Come on, bro. Very, very hygienic and sterile. This is right. top, top notch scientific work going on here. No, no, I was just like, why are you guys doing this? Who told you to do that? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Just to say it did? I think it's just, yeah. And whatever. he would say, you got my piss, and walking around, hey guys, piss, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody's in the same room. Everybody's in the same room. Go to sit. But at the end of the day, those were like some amazing fights. He wasn't me. I, in my opinion, they should let the guys just go. Take it. I mean, like, I mean, some, they have, they need to control. I, it's my opinion. Control what they take, what they're taking. Right, bro. But this is so brutal in your body. You have they, to. They, uh, the amount of show they want, they, the amount of stuff they want the fighters to make it. Bro, come on. There's no way you can make it natural. You yeah. can't. You can't tell the fights right now. Because like Mark, how they are. Like Mark Coleman is just like massive. It's like yeah, that, that's definitely not all natural. Oh yeah, that's uh, you could tell with marker. Remember, that's the yeah. Those are the, the over the border supplements. Mm hmm. Stuff that you get, you can get killed. I suppose not to let the guys do it, but I mean, but it's almost like if you, I mean, granted, totally off subject, but like it's it's almost more dangerous to constantly be testing guys and making them find all these crazy loopholes to avoid the testing mm -hmm. than it is if you're like, all right, guys, like this is what you're allowed to take, like you know, whether you're doing the TRT or easier. whatever. It's easier, yeah. At least yeah, then everybody easy. knows everybody's on the same level playing field. That's it. It's a lot easier. Like nobody's cheating. You're sitting there and just going. People are not are not making the same show anymore. <laughs> right? They're all fighters. Oh yeah, you can see all of a sudden guys coming in a little flabbier, like it's lower, easier to knock out. Yeah. I mean, you know, it said like any any professional sport at the top level, the guys have to have to like do something extra. They have yeah. to. Like your body just can't handle all that. You don't do all that. Yeah. Like you can't put your body through two days, three days. Like you, you have to give them something. Like you, the human body isn't really made to to put this at yeah. all. <laughs> but to function, to function at that, you know, at that wavelength for so long. Mm -hmm. So that's crazy. Well, how are we doing on time? I should probably start wrapping it up. It's lunchtime. I gotta get going. I gotta go and get my stuff done so I can come back and train tonight. Oh, oh. Sakuraba training camp day one. So, yeah, it's it's Friday night. <laughs> Those are the fun training. So the school has been open now for six months. You actually have quite a quite a number of students. Um, a lot of people followed you from the old Jacko Black Zillions gym, mm -hmm. uh, including myself, uh, getting to train here. Uh, I definitely feel like such a better vibe in here. You know, and then the cool part is like you, you know, you're still friends with everybody. Pretty much, everyone kind of went their own way. Yeah. So it's always cool to be able to go to other places and train. Oh, you know, people ask to be needs to be happy where you're at, man. Yeah. So that's one thing. Like, what I wanna to have this in here since ever since we started. Look, if you're not happy, please go. Yeah. Please do 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 yourself a favor. Yeah. Not for me. Yeah. yeah. Go, man, because. You need to be happy somewhere. If you if you aren't happy, everybody's gonna be unhappy. Please go. Yeah. Not everyone has the same taste. No one's gonna hate you for it. Yeah, nobody's gonna hate you, man. They're I'm gonna hate you if you're here talking shit. I love when like uh, oh this guy he's not 
he's not training this in this place you should get this guy training your gym like a first thing i say to some students no <laughs> don't bring this guy in here yeah okay yeah. unless he gets here he sees what we do if it fits he stays if it doesn't please go yeah and i'm a pretty open mind guy i like i like the craziest people yeah i love it i'm not normal i'm the craziest I'm the biggest <laughs> one <laughs> i know you're tough to so, be jay-z i love to have everybody like a different personality i want to have everybody together and be happy in their own way you know learning the training their own way if you want to be a, uh, a world champion train like a world champion I just like to have a gym with the right program for the everyone. Right. And I don't think people should be mixed up. Yeah. You know, but I want it to be happy your own way. But if you, by any means, this is not the right place, go find your happiness. No, no one <laughs> no one's got you pinned down. No, no way. Down. I know. People will, I will attract people more the way I am. Now I can see my students attracting people the same way they are yeah because it's not me you know me i'm just one person the whole the whole group they're bigger than me yeah you know and i like to have them understanding this thing it's not about me yeah it's about us you know and more people have the same mentality the way they want to learn jiu-jitsu they will come here we have taste for everything right down the street you're going to have all the competition yeah. you know just women's over there or just kids over there and I have my own way you know being being original you can't go wrong with that yeah I can't be something that I'm not yeah and so and I mean you spend enough time like at the other gym like having to deal with all this other stuff like now gym that's drama. yeah well now you finally get to call the shots yeah uh, even every way but I have drama that's like yeah all right, let me end it on one last thing though. As far as like a motivational uh, thing or something that you could say to someone that's, you know, in jujitsu and they might feel kind of like, like someone that's new and they just don't get it, they're frustrated. Like, what advice would you give someone that's sitting there and just kind of feel like they're stagnant in their jujitsu? Like, what would you tell them? I. I'll, like I, I tell them, like I just said about the 95 system, drill, keep drilling, keep doing, keep it. And the one thing I've been telling the students, you know, it's not about the other person. Yeah. It's all about you. If you if you come into train, get better than your friend, you're just creating drama. First, you're just creating drama. You want to beat that guy. It's not about that guy. It's all about you, yeah. you know? You want to get better than you were before. That's how I got my things organized in, in, in my career. Like, no, it's all about me. It's not about, you know, another person. I need to beat this guy. No, I need to be better. I need, I need to jump on that treadmill. I need to go on aerodyne and tell my muscles, if you want to burn, burn. You want to break, break it. I want to see you break now. Yeah. It's about you testing yourself and get you get yourself better than you were yesterday but drill repetition and it's it, it put time on because it, it it comes with time i can i can see some students now purple belt purple belt the game just landed in their yeah on them they now make sense they're like oh now i understand why i used to do this thing yeah it comes to it comes to a simple thing. We study, you know, spend time to learn how to to how it works the mechanism of the moves, you know, where they came from. Like even myself, of course, I see, I, I watch the words to see what they're doing. I study, I study a lot of positions. Even for giving my white belt a better understanding of of a uh, half guard. It's easy to say, okay, uh, let me watch Bernardo Faria. Let's say one guy, just one guy. I did on that day, one day. And let me see, oh man, you know what? Half Korea starts with the uh, order, Robert Correa. Let me see how he started this thing. Yeah. His first week, like 90, 94, I think it was 94, or 96, the war is 96. 
you know, like, okay, study his games, study Bernard, study everybody who does half court. How the, the position got better and better and better and better and better. You know, so if you knew, keep doing the same position, study, still spend time on the mat, get a different point of view, and put yourself on that spot during training. Like I said, you will get your guard pass, let's say half guard, you're gonna get your guard pass. Yeah. Why do you need to get better? That's what I'm saying, it's about you, it's not about the person. Right. You know, have fun with the thing and learning how to uh, react with the consequence of being out, throwing yourself out there in the ring. You know, I'm gonna do half guard, I'm not half guard, but I need to know how it works, you know. Put yourself out there, test all, every position till you find yourself and everything gets balanced. And then you can create and choose where you're gonna go. But spend time on the mats and listen to your sensei. <laughs> and listen to your, your, your man, your professor. They, I told the guys, look, I tell you guys to do Caesar sweep. Okay, see how many times you see Caesar sweep? The whole two weeks I'm doing Caesar sweep? Yeah. Okay, at it, 25 years doing this. Yeah. See how many times I see this shit? <laughs> and I'm still amazed about this thing? Yeah. Come on, it's yeah. at least two times a, a day. Yeah. <laughs> 20 years, I don't know. Yeah. How many years? Oh, so there's a lot to see. In it. Yeah. So stop, look at what you're doing. Understand why you're doing it. That's why I, I mean, like, I want to get a clear uh, image of Jiu-Jitsu for my students. I want them to see for themselves why they're doing it, when they're doing it, how to get the guy there to do what he wanted to do. Right. Then you can create yourself. Right. Right. It's up to you. Yeah, it's all on you. That's awesome. Uh, well, Professor, thank you very much for taking the time this morning uh, yes, sure. doing this for me. Guys, make sure you follow Excel Jiu Jitsu on uh, Instagram. Uh, it's just uh, the letter X C E L L. And follow Professor's uh, personal Instagram. Uh, just open up George Santiago. J J. -J. Yeah, George Santiago. That's J O R G E Santiago J J. Uh, yes. Instagram. Uh, be sure to uh, follow him, send him a bunch of questions, and uh, make sure you guys tag Sakuraba and call him out. Please, that's what I was just about to say. Yeah, I think we need to start like a whole some, uh, game thing. Yeah, so, so, uh, I think we need <laughs> to make that happen. So, no, Professor, thank you very much uh, once again for doing this today. I really appreciate it. Um, thank you also for everything that you teach us. Obviously, I'm a little impartial here uh, just because of uh, everything. and. Uh, Hopefully we'll get you to do this again. I know there's a bunch of other stuff I want to sure. ask you. Anything to help you, man. I know I, I know it for a long time and yeah. we started doing stuff together, not even jujitsu, like I'm teaching you even. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to teach you, I remember like yeah. private, like yeah, no, with I Baba. It. Yeah, yeah, that was like the best part too. I was like my game grew so much just like I know a lot of people don't don't agree with doing like working with a bunch of different people, but I think I got more in tune of what my body can do in jujitsu, or what my style was once I started working with you and then drilling with uh, with Dane on everything. Yeah. Sometimes you need like the different point of view. You, you know? got it. You need to see. I, I came from the place that I, I had a lot of different yeah. games. I got to ch choose to choose to, to try everything. Yeah. You got to listen to everybody. Yeah. You, they might have something that you never seen. Like you gotta follow. You gotta follow your sensei, but you definitely have to keep an open mind. To open grow. mind, open mind for sure, one percent. But thank you, man. Thank no, you, Alexis. Man. Thank you, Jujitsu Radio, for the for the for doing it. Thank you, sir. And uh, guys, make sure, like I said, follow George. Uh, if you're ever in the Boynton Beach area in South Florida, stop by Excel Jujitsu. Come train. Open mats on Saturday. Uh, I think that's it, really. Yeah. Nice. Nice for eleven. Yeah. Go yeah. by. Check it out for yourself. Awesome. Thank you very much, sir. All right, guys. We'll catch you later. Thank you, guys. Well, there you have it. I hope you guys enjoyed the podcast. Hopefully, you liked the idea of the Sakuraba Super Fight match as much as I do. If you want to join in on the campaign to see if we can make this match happen, please feel free to tag Sakuraba. Share the uh, podcast post and tag uh, Sakuraba and see if we can make it happen. Tag 1FC too. Make sure uh, you go all out and see if we can get this to happen because it would be pretty cool to see that match. 
Once again, thank you to the sponsor, Chocaloha. Check out Chocaloha.com. Use the promo code Jujitsu Radio. If you guys like the podcast, please share with your friends. Post it on your social media. Tag me on it. I'd be more than happy to uh, to like and uh, comment on uh, whatever goofy pictures you guys got posted up. So thank you, guys. Hopefully, I'll get another podcast recorded in the next few days. If you have any suggestions on music, hit me up. Don't forget to check out the Spotify playlist for this week's training music. I got some cool stuff, uh, Clutch, Primus, and a couple other bands on there. Maybe you might have heard of, maybe you haven't. Either way, check it out. Once again, thank you, thank you, thank you guys for tuning in. It means a lot to me to hear that you guys enjoy the podcast. I will try and get another podcast recorded in the next couple of days. In the meantime, enjoy the music, enjoy the vibes, and have a good training session. (laughs) 